What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman. A story that we've been reporting on here at the channel for the better part of three or four months ever since the end of Spider-Man Far From Home and before Spider-Man left and then rejoined the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That Sony's ultimate goal was to get their live action Spider-Verse that then contained Venom and now contains Morbius as well to cross over with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and if they could, in fact, get the two to merge. Now, after that story was reported on two or three times here at the channel, of course, Spider-Man famously left the MCU and it wasn't for another month until he rejoined, spurring a new story some three weeks back that Morbius would actually be the first crossing over point between live action Tom Holland in the MCU and the Sony Spider-Verse, merging the two, which is ultimately what Sony wanted. We're going to go ahead and break down today's story from industry insiders that Tom Holland will be appearing as Spider-Man for the first time outside of the MCU in the Morbius movie, along with one other Marvel Cinematic character. Break down the story, how long it's been running, do a light chronicle to show that not only has Sony wanted this the whole time, but it actually makes more sense for both companies. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, as well as a whole slew of other Marvel-related stuff. All you have to do, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notification bell, leave a like and a comment on this video, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video. We'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Now guys, when I say this story's been running for a very long time, I mean it. In fact, so long, it not only predates the end of Spider-Man Far From Home, but rather predates before Spider-Man Far From Home was released in theaters. Here we are at five months ago before we even got some of the last trailers for the movie with a story leaked Venom in Spider-Man 3 and the MCU, Marvel Phase 4 explained. And in that video, we detailed how there were some insiders reporting that Sony's ultimate eye on the prize was getting Venom to cross into Spider-Man 3 and then be a part of the MCU. Now, apparently between then and now, they either got a little more ambitious or realized logistically the only way to do it was to cross the two universes is over and perhaps have them be one whole universe all of the properties not just Venom that's why over a month ago we broke the story Morbius Tyrese Gibson says that he'll be in the MCU and in that video over a month ago we went ahead and chronicled how Tyrese Gibson who is signed on to play probably an FBI agent hunting down Morbius in the Jared Leto Morbius movie said that his contract extends for three movies beyond this film and that those movies are set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and while I'll link that video down down below if you guys want to do any investigation of your own watch what was reported a month and five months ago it's all been cooperated and confirmed today as we have a new report that Tom Holland will be reprising his role as Spider-Man and making a cameo in the Morbius movie. This comes only two or three days after we found out that John Jonah Jameson would be the first official character connecting the two universes as we first saw him in the post credit scenes for Spider-Man Far From Home and now we'll see him in Morbius as well. Now it's unclear from the report whether these two characters will be crossing over with each other as they cross over into the Morbius movie, meaning will their cameo be the same scene? But coming in close proximity like this, there's a good chance that this is a post credit scene that they're lining up for. Now, of course, we won't get any confirmation from Marvel and Sony probably until after the movie's release. They're going to try to keep this a secret that Tom Holland Spider-Man is in that movie as long as they can. But unfortunately for them, the insider network for Marvel movies is just so strong at this point. They had to think there was no way they were going to. Now, big picture, there's been no word from Marvel on just how this will work. Will the Sony characters ever show up in the Marvel Studios movies? Or is it a one-way ticket for the Marvel characters to show up in Sony? Sony movies and then cross back over into the MCU, it kind of makes you think if they don't do this well that long term this may get kind of messy. It really hurts one property, project, or franchise to want to use a character that they're not able to when that character has been part of the backstory. That was the problem they were going to run into with Spider-Man being in the MCU and it's the problem they may run into now over at Sony if they can't use an Avengers character when it actually makes sense for their narrative. Now one thing I mentioned and it's probably still holding true at this point, they didn't even know how they were going to work it out when they agreed to do this. They said, we'll figure it out in the long term. There's just too many working pieces to say this is definitively how it will be done. But I'm guessing for Marvel Studios sakes, it'll be mostly a one way ticket. Spider-Man, John Jonah Jameson, some of the characters that they need for the Sony verse will show up in those Sony movies. But I don't think you're ever going to see Venom crossing back over into the MCU. And we did cover a report here on the channel that Avengers Secret Wars, that huge culmination crossover event that Marvel Studios made 
may be eyeing for the end of Phase 5 or Phase 6 does have a planet of the symbiotes in the narrative and that Sony Spider-Verse could work to fill that role. But guys, that's so far off. We're talking about another decade. Let's hold the horses and see what happens between now and then. Big companies get bought and sold all the time. IP bounces around. And although Spider-Man's been the main moneymaker over at Sony's entertainment division since they acquired the property, you never know what could happen down the road. And you can be sure the Disney execs are still eyeing every single day how they can bring every Marvel character that's not owned by them back home and under 100% ownership rights. That includes Spider-Man, but for now the bigger takeaway is also going to be how they choose to do this without making a total mess of it, how Sony is going to have its movies hold up to the quality that we're used to for the MCU, and how they're going to be able to interact with one another without creating too much of a mess or narrative loopholes. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments about all of this. A, about Tom Holland actually being able to be Spider-Man in the Sony Venomverse. Does this just make you more hype for the Maximum Carnage crossover? We're probably going to get sparing Venom 2 and Morbius not being an absolute disaster, which could always happen and blow up this deal outright. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments and quickly let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. We're still giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, the next of which is at the 500,000 subscriber mark all you have to do is hit the subscribe button then hit the notification bell leave a like and a comment on this video that'll automatically enter you to win the playstations any of the prizes we give away here at the channel throughout the year including two of the infinity saga limited edition box sets that we'll be announcing throughout the holiday season because it's truly random the more videos you like and comment on the better chance you have of winning as long as you have notifications turned on for your subscription my name is michael roman this is everything always guys thanks for checking out the channel and stick around we'll be posting again real real soon.